This is the third day that we have talked about quadratic equations. We know it's an equation because it has an equal sign. Anytime you see an equal sign in math, it means solve for, get an answer. What is x equal? So, you know, since it's our third day, we already know. Um, let me write the steps down. We're going to add. Students will be able to add or subtract the constant. Then divide by A. So those are our steps of what we're doing. So kind of, today all we have is ax squared plus the c. There is no b. b is like x to the first power. Our leading coefficient is going to be a. That's what we divide by. All right. So. Um, we're going to add or subtract the constant. That's what I said up on top. And then divide by A. Remember, if I get a positive number, x squared equals like 6, then I'm going to have plus or minus radical 6. Two solutions. If I got like an x squared equals 0, this is the same as we've done the past two days, then it has one solution. Zero. Not even plus or minus, just zero. If I have a negative, negative five, whatever, no solution. You cannot square root a negative number. I cannot square root a negative number. Alright, so let's start with A. Right off the bat, I see that the 48 is a constant. The 48 needs to go over to the other side. Should I add or subtract 48? Add 48. And I'm going to put BS for both sides. So, now I've almost got my x squared alone. What's my next task? Divide by 3. That's the A that I'm talking about. If you're not sure what the answer is, do a little division on the side of your paper. We're not going to be using calculators during the quiz. It's 16. Then I square root both sides. S Q R T B S, lots of abbreviations. X equals plus or minus four because 16 is a perfect square. B looks kind of weird because of this 27 is in the front. So it's backwards. It's written. It's off. But still, this is a constant. Zero is a constant. The 27 needs to move over. doesn't matter that it looks opposite and reverse. I still worry about the 3 at the end. This 27. 
It's a positive 27 because there's nothing in front of it. How do I move a positive 27? Right. Make it a negative or subtract it or minus. So I'm going to subtract 27. There's still a negative sign in front of the 3. Negative 3y squared equals negative 27. Both of them. So, and um, this is then my a needs to go. The negative 3 needs to go. Divide by negative 3. Divide by negative 3 on both sides. y squared equals positive 9. Okay, square root both sides. What's the square root of 9? And I have to do plus or minus 3 because it's a, what can I plug into y? I could do negative 3 times negative 3, or I could do positive 3 times positive 3. All of these following are the same pattern, the same steps. So add 68. I'm on C. Add 68 to both sides. 2m squared equals 72. Are you all good to divide by 2? Are you thinking that's the next step? Sure is. And then square root both sides. What's the square root of 36? Can you hear your phone? D, try it by yourself. A little easier. A, B, C, D. Do it by yourself. Super simple. Divide, or I'm sorry, uh, square, root. square root both sides. Okay. Piece of cake. Let's get through these last three. Add five, both sides. Next, what's my task? I have 3x squared equals 27. Uh, divide first, please. Divide by that 3. You have to isolate the x squared first. Divide 3 both sides.
X equals plus or minus. What's the square root of nine? Positive plus or minus three. F. Table two, not Luis. Table two, what do I do on F? Add what number? 19. Thank you. Um, 144 plus 19. I don't know. 4 plus 9 is 3. 4 plus 2 is 6. 163. Negative 5x squared equals 163. Random. Because 5 is not going to go in. And... It's going to be, because I'm dividing by negative 5, this is just going to be something that I can't even, a negative infraction, no solution. G is backwards, but that's okay. Subtract the 7 first. There's still a negative sign in front of the 10. It doesn't disappear. Negative 10 u squared equals 1 minus 7. Negative 6? When I divide by this negative, tell me what happens it would make it a positive. So I can actually square root this. Six tenths, it's gonna, it, if I put it in a decimal, I'm sorry, if I put it into the calculator, it'd be a decimal, but I'm just gonna leave it. And you know. Oh. If I, have a fraction in any capacity, I simplify it. Six tenths is an even fraction. I can simplify that fraction. Six over 10 reduces to what? Three over five. I can't do anything with that. I leave it just like that, but that's still the answer. All right, I have a couple of word problems on the back. Turn the page. Yeah. Back, I would say maybe a, once or twice in junior high. Maybe last year also, you talked about the Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So it's like the leg, a leg is one of the sides that touches the 90 degree angle. There's two legs and then this is called the hypotenuse. Leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. So what we're gonna do is we're going to practice this formula. In these two problems, number three and four. So if our job is to solve for X, we're just gonna set it up like a normal Pythagorean theorem problem. 12 squared, this needs meters, 12 meters, 37 meters, 5x meters. Okay. I've got up on top, one of the legs is x squared, one of the legs is x squared, the hypotenuse is 200. 
So I'm going to set this up. Here's my right angle. Leg squared plus leg squared equals 200 squared. Hypotenuse squared. These both have an x squared. So an x squared plus an x squared makes 2x squared equals 4. Okay. 40,000. 200 times 200. This is a problem like the front side. I need x squared alone. Well, it's the first step going to be. Divide what? The two. Yeah. X squared equals, so I'm cutting 40,000 in half. What's half of 40,000? 20,000. Now, we had a problem like this before, uh, last night's homework. I need to break this up. 10,000 is a perfect square. So it's going to be 10,000 times 2. Because 10,000 square rooted is 100. Radical and I leave the two underneath. Plus or minus, of course. And honestly, this might mean nothing to you, so I'm actually going to work it out. Because it's asking you, how long is the tower? How tall is this tower? And then, how far is it from the bottom of the tower to this secure spot right here? The square root of 2 is 1.4, 1 1.412. So let me just multiply it by 100 for you. So here's what I do on my calculator. The square root of 2 is that, 1.4, And then I'm going to multiply it by 100. Obviously, my answer is not going to be the negative version, but it's basically saying... that the tower and the distance are 141.4 feet. The tower is 141 feet tall, and this is 141 point, ah, sorry. Messed up a little bit. Okay, so that's a real life situation of when would I have to use this solving for quadratics. Down below, my shape, I'll just set it up for you, 12 squared, leg squared, plus 5x squared equals 37 squared. 12 squared plus 5x squared equals 37 squared. And it's 5x squared where the 5 is in parentheses. The 5 also has to be. So, 12 squared is 144. 5x squared is 5 squared, 5 squared, and x squared. Both of them have to be squared. 25x squared. And then 37 squared. is 1,369. I just did that on my calculator. Again, during a quiz, I'm not going to give you numbers that require a calculator. It would just be smaller and easier numbers. This is like our front side. What should I move first, the 144 or the 25? 
Can you take out your headphones? Oh, wait, put them away. All right, so subtract 144. 1,369 minus 144 is 1,225. 25 x squared equals 1,225. Last step. Divide by 25. 49. Nice. It comes out really good. And obviously, x would equal... And again, if I plugged in positive 7 for 5x, I would get 35. If I plugged in negative 7 for, 30, for uh, 5x, I would get negative 35. I don't want the side of my rectangle to be negative 35. So I cannot use my negative. x is just positive 7. So this is 35 long. 5 times 7. 35 long. Okay, we're not going to do that last problem, number four. So, we have a lot of practice today. I'm going to have you do the evens on this page. That'll, that I'm going to give you about 20 minutes for. You can work with your group. And then we're going to go over the answers. I'll give you credit for doing it. Like, I'll go around and check your stamp sheet. Then, we're going to do a quadra activity and... Practice for our quiz on Wednesday.